So The Flash has been available on streaming for a while now. Infamously, it flopped at the box office, just like the last several DCEU films. But why? How did we get here? To this place where no one's interested in these films. It seems to go beyond the quality of each film individually, since the swathes of people not turning up for them can't judge their quality, not having turned up for them. It speaks more to the overall reputation of this film universe, and what people have come to expect from it. Putting aside the atrociously bad CGI and a few other issues, I think the film is actually fairly good, which surprised me. It has some decent action scenes, some good character interactions, and the story is reasonably engaging. Those positive aspects to the film do however come in isolation from the broader cinematic universe of which it's part. In the context of that universe, the film makes things even more messy than they already are. In fact, the Flash film serves as a metaphor for the state of the DCEU continuity, summarised quite well by the spaghetti scene explaining the multiversal mess created by time travel. As epitomised in this film, the DCEU is all mixed up, confused, inconsistent, going back and forth between different directions, closing the book on certain characters, but then changing course and bringing them back again, partly sticking to continuity while ignoring other facets of it, recasting some characters and not others, etc. How exhausting the whole thing is. But this isn't really intended to be a review of The Flash as such, rather more an assessment of where it sits in the meta-context of the DCEU, the state of this cinematic universe, and why this film has flopped so badly. So let's get into that more overarching conversation. To restate, The Flash is not the first DC flop, but rather the latest in a line of flops for their film franchise. Clearly, the fact is, people aren't turning up to these films anymore, and that's due to a fairly obvious confluence of factors. Often the marketing for them is quite poor, but it's probably hard to market a lot of them particularly well because there's just not much material to work with there to build hype. DC has abrasively abandoned the identity they'd originally crafted for their cinematic universe, moving away from the original, stylized, cool, distinctive design choices for the character costumes and cinematography, etc., of the Snyder period, to an ugly, bright, garish, tacky look for all these things, which perhaps leaves the impression of cheapness in the minds of the audience. That's got to be pretty hard to make good marketing material out of. It's also unappealing on posters and such. So oversaturated with colour, so sickly and infantile, like it's for very young children rather than the teenage to young adult audience the actual content is targeting. Then there's the story content of many of these films, which the majority of the time doesn't dare attempt anything interesting anymore, but rather opts for mostly generic, safe, predictable stories now. Most of them feel frivolous and pointless, quite frankly. The direction, tone and quality of the DCEU films has been so inconsistent, disconnected and indecisive that there's no coherent ongoing canon for the audience to buy into. No ongoing soap opera, no continuous narrative, no climax being built to, like the Marvel films had, and like DC started out with before abandoning the Snyder saga. In summary, people have just learnt to expect that these films will be crap, so they don't want to waste their time on them anymore. A problem which I'm sure is difficult to navigate for a studio is that cinematic universes on the scale attempted here are a fairly new thing, largely uncharted territory. Of course, there have been other long-running cinematic sagas that have expanded into other media, forming a wide universe of interconnected films, TV shows, books, comics, etc. But they've tended to evolve organically, as far as I'm aware. Planning something so complex right from the first one or two instalments is a different matter. Sequels to films tend to be contingent on that first film's success, so lengthy film sagas normally only happen when the first instalments perform to the studio's satisfaction. 
When trying to reshape the storytelling model of cinema to fit this grander plan, the current profit model doesn't perfectly map on to the strategy needed to make that universe-building endeavour work, since films are very expensive to produce, so investors want immediate returns on them. That's understandable, but if venturing into this new frontier of cinematic universe building, a reframing of the financial incentive model the project's approached with may be necessary. This kind of complex management can be done, as the MCU is proof of. Their films have generally been financially and critically successful. However, in the past, when they have released films received more negatively, they've had the wisdom and leadership to not panic make slight adjustments accordingly going forward, but ultimately stay the course and not completely abandon everything they were in the process of building. The biggest competency lacking from the executives running the DCEU was decisive strategizing, including the ability to stick to a mapped out plan, sailing through predictably occasionally choppy waters in order to reach the shore at the other side of the voyage. Near the start of this cinematic universe, Warner Brothers had a mapped out saga of five films that had a conclusion to it, with spin-offs of course, and an end to the main story which would have left room for other filmmakers to take the universe forward into a wider expanded canon once Snyder had done his part. The plan the company had was actually very solid in more ways than just this, because they had also established a unique tone and identity for their film universe, which stood apart from the Marvel competition. Warner Brothers were actually competing with Marvel by trying to make a higher quality product with subversive, interesting, artistic, mature storytelling, rather than simply trying to copy Marvel which is what they later went on to do, and which I think massively contributed to their continued failures. Because once you've established the identity of your film universe, you can't change it to the complete opposite thing within the space of one film, which is what they did with Justice League. The only way a change like that would work would be gradually, over the course of several years of films, allowing the story and universe to evolve into something else. And even then there are limits. What are you telling your audience by jerking them around from one direction to another like that? You're signalling that these films aren't going anywhere specific, and that you're just winging it from instalment to instalment chasing trends rather than setting them, an understanding of the importance of the strategy necessary for long-term storytelling and cultivation of an audience has seemed completely absent from Warner Brothers. When building a saga of cinematic episodes as they were originally doing with their films, the audience needs to be built up over time. The studio had actually got off to a flying start in some ways here, because with just their first two films in their new universe, they'd attracted a an extremely passionate fan base, which, if the studio had taken the time to nurture and service properly, could have burgeoned into a much larger crowd. Alas, instead the studio chose to spit in the faces of their own fans in order to chase Marvel's audience. While working to optimise the potential for every episode in your saga, making them as enjoyable for the audience as possible, you need to allow for the risk of your audience being unsure or even disappointed with certain episodes, knowing that there's more to come, more context to add. Members of the audience who may be unsure or dislike some episodes in your saga can be satisfied in the end with where that story goes later perhaps. Or maybe not, maybe they still don't like it in its entirety. But that's just the risk you take when telling authentic, artistically potent, worthwhile stories. That's the business you're in as a film studio, or at least it is at its best. When crafting a saga that sticks to these principles, the legacy you leave, and thus the long-term returns, are going to be far more respectable and impressive. Twists and turns are what keep people on the hook, what makes your films stand out and compel people to watch. 
giving them a more psychologically and emotionally enriching experience. Everyone who watches analogous TV serials or film knows this about the way long-running series work. If you want to apply some of the serialised character of TV series to your cinema ventures, then you have to understand the medium and the patient, long-term strategy intrinsic to it. Warner Brothers has managed this successfully with other film series in the past. What happened here? I suppose if each individual episode in prior cinematic sagas, like Harry Potter, have been financially and mostly critically successful, then these issues of long-term strategy may not arise, because why would you question what you're doing in that scenario? It may also be different people in charge for different projects over the years, so you know, there are various factors which no doubt play into it. It seems like, during the course of the DCEU, the people running the studio have been too preoccupied with short-term rewards over long-term brand building, and delayed, but ultimately theoretically greater financial returns. The first DCEU films were very controversial, many people loving or hating them, very passionately on both sides and Warner Brothers always reacted to that as if it's a bad thing. But believe it or not, I think if it's played right, producing controversial films could actually be a very good business strategy. Those films drove so much media traffic, they were talked about and debated so much, kept in the subcultural conversation, precisely because they were so controversial. Why not lean into that, rather than shy away from it? It could have been one of the brand's greatest strengths, a saga where the audience really can't predict what shocking or amazing or beautiful things are going to happen from episode to episode can obviously be very compelling. The issues with the handling of this film franchise started with the complete mismanagement of the rollout of Batman v Superman and the incompetent response to the critical reception to that film. The film was structured for a three hour runtime, and that was agreed to be acceptable by the studio. The full three hour cut is, in my view, excellent, and it was going to be that version released theatrically until, last minute, Warner Brothers changed their minds and mandated half an hour of essential footage get cut from the film, rendering it, in my view, still enjoyable but certainly greatly compromised in quality, with a harder to follow plot, missing context for things and strange pacing. This, it's been speculated, was all for the purpose of generating greater box office returns by squeezing more cinema showings in per day with a shorter film, a move that completely, and I'd argue predictably, backfired. Warner Brothers wanted to have a long-running, expansive cinematic universe while also having the first films in that universe be billion-dollar hits. That's not a massively unrealistic expectation, given their second film in that series was so well marketed, with such big superhero names and such an exciting premise, which had everyone talking about the film before its release. In my anecdotal experience, even people who have no interest in the comic book movie genre. However, even though a billion dollars was not an unrealistic expectation, it also shouldn't have been taken as a certainty, and should not have been such a shock when the film didn't make quite as much as that. And I say not quite as much as that, because despite falling short of its goals, Batman v Superman did make a lot of money at the box office, over $870 million worldwide, and if the studio released the full cut in cinemas, I suspect it would have made more. The four highest grossing films of all time are all three hour films, and the ultimate cut of Batman v Superman, that's the three hour cut released on Blu-ray after the film's theatrical run, sold a lot of units. It was top of the home video charts for over two months consecutively, and over 70% of the home video sales for the film were for this three hour cut. People were much more interested in this version of the film than the shorter cut. That's one of the highest first week purchase percentages for Blu-rays ever for a new blockbuster. Warner Brothers should not have second-guessed themselves on the runtime of Batman v Superman. They should have released the highest quality version of the product, not the shortest version. High quality is what attracts custom, not brevity, demonstrably so. Before the fiasco with the reshooting and recutting of Justice League, 
Warner Brothers actually did a similar thing with Suicide Squad, taking the film away from its director, recutting it and altering the tone and story. This film was still financially high performing, but it's fair to assume would probably have been better quality if not messed around with by the studio in the absurd way it was. Look into the details of what happened there if you want to know. That film was heavily derided critically, but there was not as much audience ire from the DCEU fandom for that situation. Probably because Suicide Squad is just a smaller thing and it was basically a spin-off not the next episode in a saga like Justice League was, along with other factors. I think it was also quite entertaining too, in spite of its issues, but it's another artefact of mismanagement within this film franchise. Another step along the path to failure. Warner Brothers was charging down at full speed. We don't need to go into the situation that took place with the vandalism of the Justice League film. That topic has been covered enough online, and it's obvious what huge problems sprung from the foolish studio mandates imposed there. I'll instead conclude this here. Zack Snyder had an ongoing saga of connected films. It was one story being told over multiple chapters, a soap opera with shocking twists and turns, and cliffhangers leaving fans wanting to know what happens next. When Warner Brothers abandoned that, because they didn't understand what they had, in favour of this disconnected, yet in theory still part of the same universe approach to their films, of course people lost interest, because what even is that? The post-Snyder DC films have generally been pretty naff, so it's no wonder people have stopped showing up for them. The Elseworld films Warner Brothers has been making, not part of the DCEU, have performed very well. That's no surprise because they're actually high quality, and the tone and style of them is more in line with the Snyderverse than anything in the recent DCEU. Darker, more stylish and moody, more edgy, more artsy. If only Warner Brothers had the patience and strategic wisdom to stick to that approach for their DCEU films, they'd probably be far more successful at this point, and there'd be no reason to reboot the universe. The poor box office returns for The Flash are the result of the culmination of all this maddening mismanagement over the years. But anyway, what do you think? Do you agree with what I've said here? What do you think the causes of the DCEU problems are? Let me know in the comments below, leave a like if you feel like it, and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching, see you next time.